Hello, now in this video we will be going over the motion system for the Voron V2. The motion system on the Voron V2 uses an MGN 9H linear rail. You need four of these for the Z axis, two for Y, one for X. So you will need seven rails for your build. The configurator, depending on the size you choose, will tell you exactly the length of rail you will need and you will need the MGN 9H carriage. 9C will not work as the carriage is shorter and it is not designed to fit any of the Voron parts. They're all designed around 9H. So that is the rail you will need. Now for sourcing your rail, there are multiple options available. For sourcing your rails, the supplier we recommend is CNA on AliExpress. Some have had luck with other suppliers as well on AliExpress or eBay. However, from what we have gathered from multiple purchases from several people, CNA has been the most consistent quality delivery of rails so far. A few people have had minor issues with rails, but they have been resolved really quickly with simply new rails being sent to the purchaser. Now for the rails, you're looking at about, uh, depending on the size of your build, anywhere from about $12 to $20 per rail for your build. This is the rail for a 250 millimeter spec build. I simply just ordered an next one in case, never needed it. Now for the quality question, uh, are Chinese rails crap? This comes up a lot. A lot of people are asking about if they want should be using high win or other high higher end quality brand rail for their build. And the answer to that is simply it's not worth it. This is a 3D printer, not a CNC milling machine. There are no forces on the cutter or in this case the uh, tool head of the printer. It is simply moving around. For that, Chinese linear rails are perfectly acceptable. There is minimal play. They're straight, they're machined to spec. Yes, they're not as good empirically as say high wind rails, but for the massive price increase, you're not gonna see that much if any improvement in actual print quality. So it's simply not worth it to spend as much on your build on rails for higher quality rails. These are about 15 to $20 each. High one rails are 80 to $100 each and you need seven of them. So we recommend sticking with the MGN 9H from AliExpress CNA as a supplier. Now for mounting your linear rails, in the STLs for the Voron, there are these simple handy dandy guides for lining up your rail. Now you will see two of them are blank and two of them have this little arrow. These ones are used for your X and Y rails. And when you put these on, this centers your rail on the extrusion. As you can see, it is now centered. This allows you to screw it down with it on location. Now for these, these are for your Z rails. The arrow points inwards towards the build plate. So on the, if you're looking directly at your printer, on the right side rails, they will look like this. On the left side, they will look like that. So this insets your rails inwards. And as you can see, when you put these on, make sure they are both pointing in the same direction. You can see, now, while still supported, the rail is inset now. Okay. Now for mounting, you do not need to screw your rail down every single hole. Most people do every other. So what I do is I install my T-nuts, and I'm not going to install them all in this demonstration. So what I do is roughly figure out where your rail needs to go in the instructions. It'll tell you the spacing and the positioning of your rail and simply just kind of eyeball every other location, such as that. Put your rails on, use the guides to line them up. And 
is simply screw it. So you need M3 by 8 millimeter screws. Every other screw is sufficient. And that is how you attach your rails to the frame. One thing that I do wish to go over that I forgot to do when I was talking about my extrusion video and frame is for mounting your linear rails to your extrusion. See how it says flat? You cannot use V-slot extrusions with a Voron. You will have no way to properly mount your MGN rail. Your printer will fail before you can even assemble it. So do not use V-slot extrusions with your Voron. Do not immediately take your rails out of the package and install them on the frame. When you purchase them, they will come in packing grease in a bag usually. These ones are still in the package. This is how your rail comes. And as you can see, it doesn't slide. And this is because it's dirty. It's directly from the factory. With China, what you save on money, you lose in essentially quality control and uh, finish. So for this rail, it needs to be cleaned. There are several ways to go about cleaning your MGN 9H carriage. The simplest way is to simply not remove the carriage and soak it in a degreaser such as Simple Green, uh, non-chlorinated brake cleaner, or any other solvent that will dissolve grease and not harm the plastic or the metal. Uh, I use Simple Green and a generic uh, surface cleaner that is also a degreaser. So what you can do is you can soak it and simply move the carriage a bit, wipe it off with a rag. Move the carriage a bit, wipe it off a rag. And keep doing that until everything is removed and then you need to re-grease it. Now what you can do is with white lithium grease, if you have a applicator that has a small enough point, you can simply squirt it in through the gap there onto the balls and move it around until all the bearing balls are lubricated, apply some more, and then wipe off the excess. Now, if you do wish to remove the rails, you must be very gentle. Now on these ones, you can see there's a little uh, clip there that actually holds the balls in. Once you start cleaning these, they'll fly everywhere. So what I would recommend is in a bowl, disassemble, let everything soak in your cleaner of choice and then reassemble so you would put it all back together and then for the bearing balls you can simply just kind of pop them back in and for greasing what I would do is there's a raceway drilled through each side I would pack that with grease and then as you put the bearings in they will circulate around and get properly greased up now what you can do is if you are worried about quality you can purchase uh, replacement bearings. Um, in this case, I'm going to lose two, but I will fix those later. So I will take care of that later. You can purchase higher quality, uh, either ceramic or hardened bearings on Amazon or any other uh, bearing supplier. If you wish to improve the quality of your bearing, if you find that you have a certain carriage that isn't moving as freely as you would like. Now once you pack it with grease, odds are it won't move around uh, under gravity because of the grease. However, with light force, it should move freely. What we recommend is with your seven rails, you simply pick the best rail for your X axis, your two best for your Y, and then the remaining four for your Z. Okay. Now for bearings. Bearings on the Voron are either 625 or F695 type. That is the 625 style and the and the F965 is a flanged bearing. They're available in both RS and ZZ type. The ZZ type are such as this where it's simply a, uh, a metal cover on the bearing protecting it. The RS type have this rubber seal. Now RS are more expensive than ZZ. For the most part, you can get by with ZZ everywhere. For sourcing your bearings, you have many different options. You can choose to purchase high quality bearings, SKF, Fushi, um, 
on eBay and Amazon, there's good sellers such as Fast Eddies. There's multiple different sources for good quality bearings. Another option is to do um, what I personally do and just buy a lot of bearings off AliExpress. Most of these you can buy in 50 packs from suppliers for $15 to $20. So you basically buy way more than you need and go through and any that you think are not good quality, don't use them. Now, personally, RS type bearings, I recommend using in the Mobius extruder because of the nature of the extruder, you will get little plastic uh, shavings in there. The RS bearing will prevent that from packing up inside the bearings and potentially causing a failure. You could use RS bearings throughout the entire printer, uh, but it's not really required. However, if you do want the peace of mind, go ahead and do that. Is with your pins, your five millimeter pins, or the Voron, they need to be able to fit through smoothly, but you do not want them to wobble. These ones fit really nice and smooth. These ones were some cheap ZZ ones that I bought, and as you can see, they wobble. These are not what, you do not want this. Okay, so if you have a pack of bearings that are like this, I wouldn't recommend using them. Uh, you're going to introduce slop into the system and you won't get good print results. Now, these pins here are exactly five millimeters. A lot of these bearings have a five millimeter hole, which means they do not fit through freely. If this happens to you, all you simply need to do is chuck your pin in a cordless drill, for example, and with some you know high grit sandpaper, 600, 1,000, simply spin it while holding onto it, and it'll take shave off the hair of material that will be required for this to fit in perfectly. So depending on where you source your pins, some pins come five millimeters exactly, some are 4.98 millimeters. You may need to look into that. Your pulleys, you will need 20 tooth and 16 tooth pulleys for your Voron V2. Now, if you are using the older style uh, 80 tooth printed gear, you will also need a deflanged 40 tooth, but the new revision uh, currently uses a 20 tooth gear with the flange removed on that. And to remove your flange, all you really need is a bottle opener. And what I do is I use a pin to hold it, and then you pop off the flange. Now, for pulley supplier, we recommend Pouge on AliExpress. Their quality has been very good for their price, and their consistency is much better than some other AliExpress suppliers. One thing you really need to look out for with your pulleys and your belt is the standard. Now, with 3D printers, you're really going to see two different types of belt. You're going to see 2GT or GT2, uh, both names are thrown around and MXL. You do not want MXL pulleys. To check for that, it's sometimes hard to see. The easiest option is actually to look at it deflanged, but if your pulleys are nice and curved for the slots, you have 2GT, that is good. If they are trapezoidal, where you have a flat bottom and the walls are angular, then that is MXL. You do not want to mix MXL and 2GT. It'll throw off your steps per millimeter and also it will leave imprints from the imperfections in the print. You will actually see the tooth marks in the walls of your print if you mix MXL and 2GT up. And lastly, belts. You will need 110 millimeter loops, 188 millimeter loops, and you will also need several meters of six millimeter width. 2GT belt for your X, Y, and Z motion. Now for the loops, Pouge on AliExpress is a good supplier. So while you are ordering your belt loops, get your pulleys as well. And for your X, Y motion, uh, the belts we do recommend are from Triangle Labs on AliExpress. These They do carry a Gates Unata 2GT belt at a price that's actually much better than what E3D currently offers for the exact same belt. Uh, I have a 12 meter pack of the belt uh, I got for 40 Canadian. The fiber count is very high. They're very stiff, but pliable, so they're not going to uh, shred on you like steel belts would in a tight radius. And they are very high quality. So they are gates. 
Unata. They are, if I remember correctly, manufactured by the Asian market distributor for Gates. So they are legit Gates Unata belts. And these are the pouch belts. Again, 2GT belt is what you want. And that is the motion system for your Voron V2. The next video I will do will be on the electronics. Uh, I don't, depending on the length, it may be a one or two parter, but I will be going over power supplies, wiring, hot ends, bed, and your controller as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. I am Uber Nero on the Discord, so feel free to pop in there and rack my brain with any questions you have there too. Thank you.